to him honor. Give honor to whom honor? Yes. Yes. We have a pastor from Arizona here. Mm -hmm. When I visited their church, actually we sang some beautiful Kikuyu Kigosha songs in Arizona. Phoenix, where? Arizona. And this lady actually, when we started church here, she was my supporter. She used to have an office here, Farmer's Choice, and we used to meet down here at Ruth Karugango's place. So let's make uh, Pastor Justa Modoni Joguna feel welcome to say greetings from Arizona. Let's appreciate it, Pastor. Let's appreciate that. because I'm so blessed to stand here because I happen to be the history of this church. Praise the Lord. Amen. And when I see these faces, I'm like, oh God, this is prayers answered. Hallelujah. My, my name is uh, Justa Jogona Manera. from all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. I love the bishop so much. He came to that humble beginning. We have a church this time called Deliverance Worship Center, Arizona. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because we have a dream. Praise the Lord. And the one thing we have purposed is that in the book of Psalms 119, verse 11 says, Your word I hear in my heart that I will never sin against the Lord. And that is our thing in Arizona. Praise the Lord. Because I know there are many who have left this country. They have come to America, the land of their fortune, and they have lost the vision. I used to sing the Deliverance Expression Choir, and we used to sing, don't lose your vision, praise the Lord. And we are in Arizona, and we are not losing the vision, praise the Lord, Amen. because you're purposed. Your bishop came and really encouraged us. We are just a small congregation, so we just uh, convert your prayers, and uh, I just want to thank God for this church. My heart beats when I see this. Hallelujah. Because when we pray, God answers prayers. I used to work in Farmer's Choice, and I used to live all the way in Goma. And every Tuesday, we used to meet at Karawano's uh, Ruth is over there. Ruth. Hallelujah, Ruth, praise the Lord. And we used to go out there every Tuesday. And little did we know this is what we are going to do. To bad, hallelujah. So let us not be wary of doing good. Therefore, I'll be going back to USA on uh, the 28th, and I just want you to give me greetings. When I go there, what do I say? Salam. And pray, pray for our people in uh, America because they are bleeding. So we need your prayers so much that they may never lose their vision because when they go there, there are many challenges, they are faced with the situations, and therefore we need your prayers that they may never, never give their vision, lose their vision. Because many have lost, many have been discouraged because of the challenges of that nation. But you know our God is never too late to save. Hallelujah. God bless you so much. Bishop, bless thank you, you so bless much. You, bless you. Thank you so much. Just uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. Bless you. Bless you. Let's appreciate uh, Pastor Christo. Hallelujah. Then we have a guy there. He's a, he's a son of the house. Say to Chapie Zile from Toba. This, this young man comes from all the way from Atlanta, Georgia. And he tells me he cannot be here for Christmas because he has a sweetheart on the other side. Well, anyway. Wale Havana. Praise God. Praise God again. Amen. Uh, I bless God for this opportunity to come here and greet all of you. Uh, I want to say thank you to Bishop and Mom. I did not open yet today. I said, get myself from Mom. Michelle, this calls me, but I did not even yet to go. But uh, I still love you. I bless God for this opportunity. I greet you greetings from my wife. And um, we shall interact with the ones we shall be able to. Otherwise, we will go it. Asante sana. Thank 
that there is a song that I uh, you know sometimes when you are overwhelmed here, you sing a song. You can't go wrong, Pastor, by singing a song. It helps you coordinate your thoughts and it helps you prepare yourself well. Um, what song? Uh, would you like to stand and if you don't know, you just smile at them. But the song is they that wait upon the Lord. But you can smile at them if you don't know it. Amen. If you want to join us, you can. It's just a small chorus. They that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. a seat here. Come, go, go, find your way and come and see here. This is the son of our senior pastor, Karatina Deliverance Church, and he's a singer. He has a, a metoa CD, the son of Tulina Kadarika. Or if you are here, you can go to the son of They that wait upon the Lord shall renew before he had seen the Lord Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, 
And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting yourself depart in peace according to your words. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all the peoples. I like to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Then Simon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall, for the fall and the rising of many in Israel, and for a sign which will be spoken, which will be spoken against. Yes. A sword will pierce through your own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Fanwell, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age and had lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. And this woman was a widow of about 84 years who did not depart from the temple, but served God with fasting and prayers night and day. And coming in that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke of him to all those who looked for redemption in Israel. Father, that you speak to us in a language that we can understand this morning. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I've read that story of those two men, a man and a woman in the Bible, because they were waiting. I think the question that I want us to address is, what are you waiting for? Christmas is just about. After fact, Christmas has already begun. You went into the mall and the music is Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, Jingle all the way. They, 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 that is a kind of a mood in our country at this time. But the question is, what are you waiting for? In the book of Psalms 130, verse 5 and 6 says, I wait for the Lord, my soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. Verse number six, my soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch in the morning. My soul waited upon the Lord. Let me try to introduce what I want to share with you, if I would. What are you waiting on? When we hear this word spoken to us or, to, or towards us, we discover that we are the source of someone's frustration. If somebody would ask you, what are you waiting on? Or maybe, let's start at this, who, who are you looking at? You, you almost discover there is someone you have, you are a messing there, there. Usually, it could be either we are standing in a queue in the bank, and we are not moving. So somebody behind you might ask, what are you waiting for, fellow? Keep moving. And for us that drive, bless the Lord for the drivers. We have a few words for those guys that are not seeing an open space, which a matato will see from 20 vehicles down the road and come and feel it. So you are there, the guy behind you, then you hoot and you, you are wondering, what are you waiting for? It's like you almost want to tell them, please keep on moving. Or maybe in the post office, the queue in the post office because they're not like the U.S. where they drop letters in your house, waiting for some service. Or maybe you are sitting in, a, in, in some place and it is a wait. Yesterday I went to the bank here and I have my, when I entered to a bank I asked, who is the last person? Because the bank here is a good one. I go to the best part. The best part is where you just sit whenever you want to see it. So when you enter, you ask, who is the last person? And I shout so that they can hear. So I was told, that is the last person. And I said, I will follow you. Then I went to the corner where they have tea and coffee. I served myself. And somebody walked in and said, please serve me. And I served them. Now, because in that setup, someone can try to come in and make himself mutuati. So at least before I entered in, a few people came. And I told them, I am before you. Don't stand there. 
car anywhere else, but don't go very close to them. Because I was there for a while, I had finished one cup and I wanted to go for a second one. <laughs> when, when you're waiting, waiting period is not an easy, an easy time. What are you waiting on? Or what are you waiting for? When you think about Christmas, what are you waiting for? And what are you waiting on? What shade of green are you looking for? What is that color that you're looking for? What are you? What is Christmas for you? You know, you know me. And I tell you stories of my Christmas. Because my Christmas, we long for it. Some of you remember I told you, we had one that was thin one. And you are both that thin one in Christmas. And thank God it was long at the back, shorter in the front. For various reasons. So that when you are skidding, you use the back one which is long to skid down the, the some places we pour water. <laughs> it was three in one. But we looked forward for it. Chapatis. We looked forward for them. And in actual fact, at one time we used to say, Chapati is the only thing that you still have room for, even if you visited five homes. If you are told Chapati, you said, there is still room for one more. Because you will wait for a whole year before another chapati shows up. That's how sad our Christmas was. We look forward. We long for it. We, sometimes we would not even sleep when Christmas is coming up. Why? Because we would know already there is Christmas. And there are some ladies that used to have what we didn't have. Rugio, Rugio, Rugio. That, <laughs> that pan for the chapatis, you know. You have to go and queue somewhere, you know. And, and you have to borrow it. And then the owner would say, I give you for one hour. So you use for one hour because people are queuing for it. That thing to cook. And you know, later on when I discovered you can also use a sukuri, a sukuri. <laughs> you know, some of you, some of you, God bless your heart. You have no clue, no idea. Me, I can cook you Japan with a sukuri. <laughs> Anyway, we looked forward for it, and it was amazing as people looked for and waited for Christmas. Some of us waited for Christmas because of various things, and I, even now there are those that still wait for Christmas for this reason. House helps want to go home for Christmas, for marriage. They go home, they don't come back in time. And if they come home back, they are sad. Because it simply means another whole year to wait until another Christmas for somebody to come up and marry them. No one likes to wait. Actually, I don't. And especially in our present culture, we don't want to wait. We want everything instant. I want it now. Nakamasi sasa. You see? Sasahidi. So most everything comes to us and we want it instantly, whether it is food or information, we want it now. Me and my wife, we are still analog. We are working very hard. So, like my sister who said, she had to go, come home and look for a dictionary. Our children don't do that. They Google. <laughs> In actual fact, when you ask, when you are telling them, I want to buy a car, they tell you Google. I want to buy a dress, Google. I want to do this, Google. Because for them, everything is Google. But for you and me, analog people, all what you want to do is, I want to go literally and look for vehicles from the, the yard here all the way to Gomuru. And then the guy tells you, Guku, you will see it. Kama yuko kisumu, utaipata pali, utasema tu age and so on. If it is in New York or London, Guku it. So many times I have found myself trying to get something and my, my phone has been snatched from me by some of those digital guys. Daddy, daddy, Guku. And then very soon I have it. Whatever it is, whether I need a lecture, whether I need anything, they have it on the Google. They, we, we don't want to wait. We don't want to wait. But can I tell you something? On waiting on the Lord, there is no Googling. You have to do it. Waiting on the Lord, there is no 
Googling. And if you Google for marriage also, you will mess yourself up. You don't Google for marriage. You wait upon the Lord. <laughs> I can see Kimani is shaking his head because he never could. He waited. <laughs> so waiting upon the Lord is very, very crucial for us. Waiting is part of what it means to be human. If we are superhuman or superheroes, and it was entirely in our hands to know and even decide. And it was all entirely in our hands to possess everything that we want. You know, when I was small and money was lacking in our home, I used to say if I was a bad, I would fly in a bank and take only 100 shillings and give it to my mother. But I could not become a bad. And bats are not thieves. <laughs> Even when they fly in a bank, they don't go to steal. We are not superhuman. We are human beings. And because we are human beings, then waiting is inevitable for us. What are you waiting on? Those are questions that we're asking ourselves. Are you a single a person and waiting that special someone to walk into your life? Perhaps you have met that special someone and are waiting for him or her to make a commitment. You know, you are just there. Are you without a job, desperate, looking for a job? And tired for the job that you are presently holding, and you're looking for a job, waiting for a better job, waiting for a better salary, and you're waiting. Are you waiting for the economy to be bound up? Are you waiting for the market to return back? And there's something that you're holding, and you're waiting for the market to be better. What are you waiting for? Oh, are you waiting? Perhaps you are waiting for a prodigal, rebellious child that grew up and left, and you are still praying that that child will come back. The question is, what are you waiting for? Although it is not often listed as such, waiting is a Christian discipline. Waiting is a Christian discipline. We are not naturally wired or in, wired or inclined to wait. Babies are a very good example. Because babies are not born this yet. Did you know that? A hungry baby demands to be fed, changed, entertained, and they say, nah. And they know how to do it. Mama na jaribu kumunonyesha ataki ni attention. Labda. Uh, without mentioning name, Naza kuwa kwa supermarket na unamtoto mdogo. Akifika wakati ule, akapiga nduru kwa hiyo supermarket. Mami, I want to go to the pool! And then you almost, you want to, to, to pretend who is he wangu? <laughs> They're not patient at all, but they wanted, they wanted now, 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 now. And uh, and you know, they threat you and they do it. It's a talker. In a talker. It's a talker. And you know, they're to care at the wrong places and so on and so forth. They have no concept of time, no sense of tomorrow, no patience to wait. But if you went fishing, fishing is a good way of waiting. Because you throw in and you wait. But some of us who go fishing and they don't want to wait, they keep on removing nothing, removing. And you have to wait until you see something. But there are some who keep on, you know, unatupa. And the story is given of a young man that was fishing. And he was so disappointed. So he was asked by someone, are you fishing? He said, no, I'm throwing my worms in. Because there was nothing. 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 I don't know where you are, but keep on waiting. Let me give you an illustration here. Maybe some of you can identify with it. A woman who was checking in in a supermarket. She was very uneasy. She had come to purchase a new broom along with some cleaning supplies, and she was in a hurry. And the line was not moving. It was not moving fast, 
enough to please her. And she was letting everyone feel her frustration by her body language and loud sighs that she had. When the cashier called for a price check, which delayed her turn at the counter even longer, the woman remarked with bitterness, well, I'll be lucky to get out of here before Christmas. Have you heard of people like that who say, hey, he, he, he. even where I was actually, the gentleman that I served tea in that uh, place is a gentleman I know. And I kept on telling him, be patient. At one time he wanted to leave that and go to TRM. But I told him, suppose you go to TRM and there is a long queue, what will happen? You will come back. Then when you come back, the queue will be larger. You are behind me. Wait. Because people, people go like this. Hi. They are people like that. They want, they want, they're in a hurry. This woman was in a hurry. Her language, her body, her everything was showing off. She was frustrated. I don't know whether I'll get out uh, for Christmas. Somebody picked her comment. And she, he said this to her. A woman with a brand new broom, which you have there, you will be home in no time. You know, there is a story of this wizard who sat on the broom, you know? So she was being told, with that broom, and then take takes you home. And I think some of us need people who can remind us some of those days. Waiting is not passivity, it is not inactivity when we are waiting. Waiting is not killing time. Waiting is not killing time. Waiting is never wasted time. When we are inactive or passive in our spiritual life, we tend to draft in our commitment. But waiting is frequently a condition of high expectancy, infusing life with great energy, with great purpose, with great love. Joseph was forced to wait on the Lord. But while he waited, he got busy doing what he could. And his good attitude and work ethic resulted in promotion that he got promoted along the way. Joseph waited from prison to a prime minister. Observing this quality, Joseph, someone said, it, when your dream seems to be placed on hold, get busy, get busy, and help others with their dreams. Because that's what Joseph did. He became busy helping others with their dreams as you wait upon what God is doing. Certainly God is not inactive when we are waiting. When we are waiting on God, most often he's working behind the scenes to put all the missing pieces in our lives together before he fulfills our desires and our requests. Waiting is not to be associated with boredom and complacency. Actually, waiting is closely related to hope. Hope. Hope has been described as creative waiting. Hope is anything, is anything but boring or complacent. Hope is filled with expectation. It anticipates. To live in hope is to live in the power of the future. Because without yet possessing it, in Psalms 130 verse 6, the psalmist said, My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. He was more than a watchman that was waiting for a morning to break up. Waiting. Waiting is not characterized by fretting and worry. Waiting is as much an attitude as it is an activity. God never recommends worry. Why? It is worthless to worry. It is worthless. It's activity that is not centered upon him. To wait is to trust. Hallelujah. To wait is to trust. It is to rest in God's uh, promises and provision. Psalms that the same verse 1 begins, Fret not thyself because of evil doers. He continues to say, Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. Verse number 7 continues, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently. 
Wait patiently. Wait patiently. Bless the name of the Lord. A few things about that, and then I'll go back to Simeon and Anna. What were they waiting for? First, when you find yourself waiting, look. Amen? Tell your neighbor, neighbor. When you find yourself waiting, look. Look. You know some of you say look and you are closing your eyes. Look. Looking is opening your eyes. Look. Look to God. The psalmist is telling us in Psalm 130 verse 5 I wait for the Lord. We must learn to patiently wait on the Lord. Our expectation must be directed towards God and no one else. When you are waiting upon the Lord, look. Don't just be there. Just look. Just look. My soul waited thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Verse 6. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense, I shall not be moved. Verse 7. In God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. As you wait, look. Don't just wait. As you wait, look. Even as we wait for the Kenya government to help us in our security, we are going to look where? To God. Because God is our refuge. God is our hope. We are going to wait on Him even as we wait for other things. Even as you wait yourself for a child or a job, look to that God who provides our needs according to His riches, which is in glory. If you are waiting, look. Oh my goodness, look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, neighbor, look. If you are waiting, look. Sometimes we are fooled into thinking that we are waiting on some person or some individuals. It is especially frustrating when we view that person or individual we are waiting on as negligent, as insensitive, as incompetent. When we look to others, when we place our expectation on mere men, we set ourselves up for real disappointments. But let us look. Amen? Let us open our eyes and look. Look and leave, the song says. Look and leave. The psalmist will remind us that God and only God is the one in control of all individuals, all institutions, and all situations. Proverbs 21 and verse 1, the Bible reminds us, The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of the water, he turned it whatsoever he will. And I like that verse. That keep Uhuru and Ruto. They are in the hands of God. He can turn them around. Look to God. Look to God. Look to God. Because when we look to God, we know the heart of the king is in the hand of God. And he can turn him around. Oh, I like that. Now turn, turn, tell your neighbor, he can. Whoa, that's some of you need to be. Turn around. Your heart is in his hands. He can turn you around. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When we wait upon the Lord, we are encouraged and we are renewed. Isaiah 40, 20 to that one where we read. Has thou not known? Has that, that song we sang not, not read? Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the end of the earth, fainted not? Neither is he buried. There is no such thing of his understanding. He gave a part to the faint, and to them that have no might increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Hallelujah. They shall walk and not faint. No wonder this song, this, this songwriter says, Now then, Lord, teach me to wait. The second thing, when you find yourself waiting, be willing to learn. Oh my goodness. If there is something that we learn when we are waiting, is, oh, have you waited in the car, in the queue? Have you been tempted to get out on the pavement? One day I got that impatient and I walked out on the pavement and not very far, I met someone who smiled at me and lifted up their hands. You know what that meant. They wasted my whole morning. 
And my part of afternoon, I was in the courtroom. So my whole day was wasted. I know some of you have done the same. Huh? Because you never, you are not patient. So when, when we are waiting, actually sometimes I call my wife and say, I'm in the jam. Do you know what she tells me? Now you can sing some spiritual songs or you can read your Bible. What a way of you making use of that time. You are in the middle of the jam. And nowadays the vehicle we drive, bless God for the vehicles we drive. They are not for state shift. State shift in the to Sukuma. So come on here, me in the bed. Hi, Taruni Duma. When you are going to break your Bible, you can break your Bible. You can So you can read your Bible. So as you wait, learn something. As you wait, learn something. You know, for the parents that went to the groups, you know, and uh, you had never slept in a tent, bless God for you. Hallelujah. But you know what? You never enjoyed the rope experience this time. Why? Because the rain rained before. Oh, we were praying for you <laughs> that no rain would come, but we were also waiting for you for rain to rain on you. my goodness. There was one one where my wife went. See what is when you find yourself waiting, be willing to learn. Waiting is everyone's portion, regardless of our age, regardless of our station in life. One thing is certain, God's waiting room is a classroom. While sometimes being in God's waiting room has to do with timing, more often than not, it is all about teaching. 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 In Psalms 130, the verse 5 again, I want to read it again. I wait for the Lord, my soul that wait. What is your soul? Your soul is the seat of your being. It is composed of your mind, emotions, and will. So when we are waiting, when our soul is waiting, we are saying everything is... Waiting. Everything is waiting. And as you wait, please learn something. I know some of us, when we are waiting, we are wondering. Sasa, nikichelewa, utakuwa na nangani. Haku utakuwa kitu. Nikichelewa. Nikichelewa, utachelewa. The world is not going to close up. Sisi, tumeenda, tukawati wanandegi. Ukiwati wanandegi, unagoja hiyo nigini. Yeah. Come on, and nothing will happen. Yeah. So when you show up, you are told, now we cannot take the mean again. Now you have to wait for the next. And nothing will happen. But let us learn in our waiting period. If the Lord has blessed you and you have a spouse, and by the way, you don't have a child as yet, in your waiting period, oh my goodness, don't wonder. Don't, don't go to the witchcrafts. You know, just wait upon God. Learn what is God teaching you at that level and enjoy it, Kabisa. Amen. You from fours and have clear. <laughs> this time, learn what God, there is a lot of teaching. See your television, there is a lot of teaching. In my phone forward, learn. Na closet, see your kulala, learn. There is something, you know. I don't know whether you know. Ata wa ulupo malisa chulo, ulita kulala sikutana. Ukalala sikumote ya pili ukawana uwezi lala sikutana. Na mzazimetu walikuwa wazuli sana. Kirana ya kwanza tu. When we, the third thing, when we are waiting, 
Now the second thing when we are waiting, we find ourselves waiting, be willing to learn. But I also want to interject something else here. Waiting on the Lord is a matter of obedience. Waiting upon the Lord is a matter of obedience. In Samuel, first Samuel chapter number 13, the first king of Israel, King Saul, was commanded to wait and wait upon Samuel to arrive and make the necessary sacrifices, but he did it. They got worked up and they did something and you know God said, from that point on your kingdom has been snatched from you. Because he never waited. We learn patient, but it has to come from obedience. The third thing about waiting is that when you find yourself waiting, listen. Listen. I have listened to the Lord as I wait. Just listen. And sometimes God has given me wonderful messages, even opening on the radio. See, I have told you, sometimes you open on the radio and you hear, eh, that was mine. Sometimes I have told you, I even don't know where the message was coming from because it was not my eye, it was in the middle. And I hear something. Now, when you wait, and you learn yourself you're waiting, please open your ears. What is the Lord seeing? Psalms 30 verse 5 con uh, uh, concluded in his words, which utter's voice do I hear? Listen to who? Listen for God's voice. God will speak to your heart through his word. God speaks to us through his word. Hallelujah. Wow. When you have five pages to go through, and time is up, I don't know what you do. Wow. We have heard of a story, this is just a story that was given of a man who was lost at sea. He left his wife behind. The husband is not dead, but is stranded far away from civilization. He's locked up in some, or maybe he's locked up in some prison in a foreign country. It is his thought of his wife that keep him alive. Meanwhile, back home he's presumed dead, but his wife never gives up hope. She diligently, patiently waits keeping her thoughts and love for her husband alive in her heart. Years later, there is a knock on the door, and who is it? Her husband, who is finally able to make his way home. They embrace one another, they feel good about one another. But there are others that once you are away, once you are away, you are away from America, you are away from America, and I decide, will you go good? And I'm one. So what are you doing while waiting? While you're waiting, get busy and do the things that are clearly every Christian's responsibility. Dwell close to God, give your best right now. Don't wait until you think you have everything perfectly in your, in your hands. Who knows, you might just catch God's eye. And he might speed up things for you and give your heart's desire. As you become busy, you wait but you become busy. Now, I go to Simon and I finish. Simon was waiting for something. Tell your neighbor Simon. Simon was waiting for something. The question is, what are you waiting? Simon was waiting for something. The Bible tells us that Simon was waiting for comfort. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simon who was righteous. This man was righteous, devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. He was righteous and he was waiting for the comfort and consolation of Israel. He was not waiting for anything else. He was not waiting for money. He was not waiting for some door to open. He was waiting for the comfort of the whole of Israel. He was waiting for something and the Bible records he was able to know when he showed up. Amen. You're waiting for Christmas. What are you waiting for? Simon was waiting for the comfort of Israel. His comfort and the comfort of the whole Israel. Therefore, as he waited, and I, I like this, as he waited, his spirit was right. As he waited, he was connected. No wonder the spirit told him, now wake up. Go to the temple. Wake up. At the right time, he walks 
him in the temple. And the Lord said, what you have been waiting, there it is. Bless the name of the Lord. He was waiting for comfort and consolation. May all those that are waiting for comfort and consolation for this Christmas that the Lord will be born, may you receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. May that which that you are longing for come your way. They that wait upon the Lord, may the Lord renew you. May the Lord give you the strength to anticipate and wait and receive what the Lord has for you. Simon was waiting for comfort. And I know there are some that are waiting for healing. They're waiting. You know, one of the things that we don't do in this church, we don't have a baby here. We are waiting for the King of Kings because he's coming to be born not in our heart because he's already born there, but he's coming to energize us. We are just coming to remember that one day, just like all of us, the Savior was born. But today he's not a baby. He's not in a manger. Simon was waiting for the comfort and consolation of Israel. What was happening in Israel? Israel were beaten. Israel were Israel had nowhere to look to. The Romans had really come so strong on them. But there was one man who was waiting for the consolation and comfort of Israel. You know, Kenyans, we are beaten. Kenyans, we are so scared. You know, we don't want to go to particular places. Like now, nobody wants to go to Lotua. Why? Because there are some guys who have made sure they are not. I guess you come to. But you cannot go. You are stranded. It's like you have been, and they say we want the government. The government has to come and we'll talk with them. Anyway, whatever is going to happen, we, but there must be some people in this church, and I know my heart, we, there is a witness within me. There are people waiting for the security of this country. May the Lord bring it. May he bring it to you. May you sense it and know when he does it. Bless the name of the, of the Lord and King Jesus. Simon was waiting because things weren't going well for the nation of Israel. They hadn't heard from God for many years and were Roman rule. They had lost their political independence and everything. But Simon was waiting for the consolation and comfort of Israel. I shall not be moved. I'm going to wait at the comfort and the consolation of King. I'm going to wait. I will not be moved. I'm going to wait until God answers our prayers. We are waiting for God, you know, you know, oh man, hallelujah, eh? hallelujah, holy son. Verse 28 says that Simon reached down and took Jesus out of Mary's arms and began to praise God. Let me pause here to make a comment. Parents, how would you feel if someone old, very old, came up to you, took your infant in his arms and started singing out loud? How would you feel? The kikuyus that are here, even looking at your child, what is that in English? You know, they used, they used to tell you, you know, don't look at my child like that. And I said, when I let me go, we do, 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 Paulie, Paulie. So she was ready for anything. So this guy lifts up the baby and lifts him up and he says, Now! Now I can die. You know, you're wondering, now die because of this baby? Yes. Now, why? Because now I can see. From this baby, I see the comfort, the consolation of Israel. I want to run quickly, pick Anna. Anna was waiting for something too. The Bible records that she was waiting for forgiveness. The other Christmas character waiting for anticipation was Anna after her husband had died. <laughs> and she had lived with her husband only seven what? Seven years. And she was how old? Eight and two years. Then you can imagine. Mama Forgiveness. May the Lord bring forgiveness to those that are seeking forgiveness. May the Lord forgive you today. May you come to know him as Lord and Savior of your heart. Anna was looking for forgiveness. She was told out for forgiveness. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who are looking forward to the forgiveness or redemption or deliverance of Jerusalem. 
The word redemption is related to the very idea of captivity. The Old Testament Passover and the release of Israel from the Egyptian slavery. In Anna's day, it was ultimate that redemption was a symbol of freedom and forgiveness. She was looking for it. When Anna saw Jesus, she gave thanks to God and spoke of him to all who were waiting for redemption. She spoke to all. She went everywhere and said, here the Savior has been born. The forgiver of sin is born. Here, here the Savior has been born. So what action steps? How can I, can we finish this? We can finish it in the following ways. Three things. And I'm finished. How many times have I said I'm finished? Let this be the last time. <laughs> action steps. There are three action steps for this passage of Simon and Anna to cling to us. You experience God's comfort and forgiveness this Christmas. If you want to experience comfort and forgiveness this Christmas, three steps. One, and please teach us, English teachers, forgive me. I'm not an English teacher. Neither are my parents teachers. Neither do they teach English. But for those like uh, Rosemary, whose mother was a teacher, she's a teacher, then you can forgive me. Number one, become a mother. Mother. <laughs> Take a look at verse 27. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, now dropped down to verse 38, which is coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God. Mother. Mother. She was so thrilled and excited about what God has done. They marveled at the goodness of the Lord. They were able to exalt the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. The second thing is become a mover. Become a mover. Step two, become a mover. There is something that we need to move. Luke 2 verse 38, Mary was ready to move when she said to the angel, May it be to me as you have said. May it be to me as you have said. Joseph demonstrated the same. That he was a mover when he woke up from his dream and did what the angel of the Lord had commanded and took Mary as his wife. Become a mover. The shepherds were movers as well. When they said, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go and see this thing that has happened. Become a mover. Don't stay put. Become a mover. And you're going to enjoy this Christmas as you wait upon the Lord. Become a mover. Be someone who is excited and finally become a messenger. And this is what Anna has done. She told everyone, everybody that was waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. She gave thanks and spoke about the child to all, all who are looking for the redemption of Israel. May the good Lord help you and help you. May the good Lord encourage us. May we have a specific things that we are waiting the Lord to do. I don't know what what are you waiting? Maybe you, you have you sat next to a good neighbor? Are they good? Do they talk to you? Ask them, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Now let them tell you. Even if they tell you they're waiting for pilau, biryani, chapati, it's all right. If they're waiting for a spouse, it's okay. And if you have sat next to your spouse and your spouse is telling you I'm waiting for you to buy me a dress, go ahead and buy that dress. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Simon waited for comfort and consolation. Anna waited for forgiveness. Our Heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, yes, Christmas is just around the corner. The question you're asking us today, what are we waiting for? And Father, I pray that whatever we are waiting for, you will bring it to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. Especially those that are waiting for the forgiveness of their sins. May you forgive them, dear Father. May you make this Christmas holiday a powerful moment in the hands of the Lord. 
are you here this, this morning? And you are saying, Bishop, I would like you to pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want you to shoot up your hands without shame or embarrassment. Say, yes, here I am. I want to give my life to Jesus. And I'll see it and we will pray with you. Are you there? Whatever corner you are, just shoot your hand up and somebody will spot you and help you so that we can pray for you this morning. Forgiveness. He's the one who forgives us. He's the one who forgives us. May the Lord bless you, sister. If you stand up, just stand up. Just stand up. Just stand on your two feet, sister. Just stand up. Hallelujah. Is there somebody else who wants to join our sister here? Yes. All what you're waiting for is the forgiveness. Is the forgiveness. Just come. Bring our sister here and let someone lead her to the Lord. Are you there? You want to join our sister here? Waiting for forgiveness. Waiting for forgiveness. Is that what you're waiting for the Lord to do? Hallelujah. Waiting for forgiveness. Waiting for forgiveness. Waiting for forgiveness. Our Heavenly Father, as we continue in our prayer, there are those that are waiting for different consolation and comfort. Father, may you bring those consolation and comfort to your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, some of us are waiting for a change to life. We are praying that from this Christmas, our new year will be different in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, put that waiting in us and that, Lord, we are not going to waver or shake as we wait upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you honor and we give you praise. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord praise in the house.